Wall Street is certainly a place, but in this sense it's an idea. It's a catch-all term for a lot of businesses like banking, hedge funds, stock brokerage, or financial advice. Asset managers, like Oppenheimer funds, put capital to work through investing. These investments accomplish two things. They help fund companies, governments, and individuals, and they help our clients save for their future. What asset managers do is create wealth. There are many ways that Wall Street and Main Street work together. Wall Street provides credit, the lifeblood of an economy. Main Street is Wall Street's ultimate customer where Wall Street is providing the capital for companies and individuals to achieve their goals on one side and on the other side it then provides good returns for the providers of that capital. Wall Street and the financial industry are at the heart of the U.S. economy. Asset managers are the grease in the wheels that move capital from the folks who have it and are looking for good investment returns to the folks who need it. Again, it could be companies that are trying to grow or individuals trying to finance a large purchase. It creates wealth for the investors and enables them to save for the future, whether it's retirement, kids' education, or philanthropic needs. Wall Street helps our communities by providing capital that helps businesses, both big and small, in the community grow. This spurs growth. Credit provision allows the overall wealth pie to grow. It can also reduce income inequality. Wall Street has really democratized access to capital, access to investing, and access to loans. Another thing Wall Street can do is help people improve their math and financial literacy. Teach people how to better manage their money and how to get more money. It also promotes entrepreneurship by providing startup capital to small businesses. It also drives innovation through funding new ideas. Finally, Wall Street can increase employment, both directly as an employer and indirectly through investing in businesses that help them to grow. Not just in our local communities here, but thinking more broadly about communities in ever wider circles, including the whole world. I've been in this business since the mid-1980s, and there's been an enormous amount of change just during my career. One of the biggest changes was the collapse of the Berlin Wall in 1989, which instantaneously opened up dozens more countries to our investment landscape, countries which needed capital, and countries which could provide good high returns for investors. Also, competition and technology has changed Wall Street enormously during my career. It's lowered both the costs and the barriers to investing. Consumers have more choices. Technology has also enabled firms to react and make decisions faster, which has lowered the friction between people who are looking for investments and people who are looking for capital to grow. Big data has enabled firms to better understand and meet clients' needs. How people interact and do their jobs has changed a lot, but what we do has changed very little. Over the years, Wall Street has evolved from an industry for the few to one that creates wealth globally. Again, the democratization of access to credit and access to investment has been really the key benefit of Wall Street to the U.S. and to the global economy. You know, the big technological innovation that occurred in Wall Street over its history is wrapping up of credit and equity stakes in companies into standardized, into a standardized form called securities that allows anybody to access that and have a very public view on what the valuation of those securities are. Now, the technology, of course, has changed a lot of things. Back on the New, on the New York Stock Exchange, runners used to carry orders between buyers and sellers. Now the floor of the NYSE itself is largely a museum and a, and a TV stage. What happens at the New York Stock Exchange is still very, very important, but it happens in glowing server rooms more than it happens on the 
on the floor of the exchange. So it's become more impersonal and automated, but that's also meant, again, wider access, more transparency, and much quicker execution. In the future, we'll see the industry is going to have to define what value it is that they deliver because there are so many disruptive entrants in the financial services area. So things like robo-advisors, uh, which allow people to get access to investments much more through just tapping on their phone rather than speaking on the phone to an advisor or meeting with them one-on-one. -on -one. So what the industry is going to have to do in the future is to focus once more on the service part of the financial services industry versus the technological innovation around development of new securities that was in flower during the last 20 or 30 years. The creation of things like exchange traded funds or mortgage backed securities. The services that advisors provide are going to be more customized, more self-directed. The customers will have more control. It will be even more transparent with respect to fees. The industry is also going to go more global as growth is driven increasingly by emerging markets. But we recognize as an industry that we are also going to have to be more targeted towards the sustainability, both uh, on the environmental side uh, and on the social and governance side.